What's that you smell in the air? Gunpowder, oh yes, that is correct. We are back in NTW3 and we have a glorious 3v3 view here. The Russian army is preparing to face off against France. They've been absolutely mauled in their homeland as Napoleon invaded. And now they're ready to inflict their revenge on the French on more, co uh, you know, common soil for the French, you could say. You know, more... Uh, some, yeah, they know this land a bit a little bit better. The Russians, you know, this isn't their snowy wastelands, but they're ready to do what damage they can to the French here. And the French have an impressive hill point. Look at this. I mean, yeah, we have lots of young guard up here. Looks like uh, this might be an 1814 uh, build by the looks of it, potentially. Uh, I wouldn't be 100% sure on it. Maybe 1814, actually maybe 1815, looking at, uh, looking at these uh, Hollandais uh, Grenadiers here. Um, so yeah, this should be an exciting one. Um, but yeah, we do have a very nice start to this fight here. We have uh, light coming to record here for 1814 Prussia. That's what they are facing up against. Not sure. This could be. Uh, this is like a peninsula campaign, France. Mainly because there's a lot of poles here. Again, more young guard though. Uh, so they seem like they're being uh, distributed around the uh, battlefield a fair amount. But yes, we do have 1812 Russia. You know, like I said, just off the back of defeating France in their own backyard. Now they're in the French backyard. And uh, now uh, they're backed up by 1814 uh, Prussia. And we also have 1811 UK Portugal all uh, the way back here. And they're making their way forward. And it looks like, uh, yeah, the, the uh, Ragged Brigade leading the way in this one. But yes, it's great to be back in NTW3. One of my favorite mods to cover really is for Total War. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at the uniforms as well. I mean, what, what can you... Hey, about this assault period. I mean, you got like, some of the most flamboyant uh, uniforms of like, like ever, and also just like some glorious like characters like Wellington, Napoleon, loads of the marshals as well. It's really cool to like read about some of the best battles, the most important battles in history, like Waterloo, Leipzig, Trafalgar. Oh, it's great! It's a great mod. It's a great period. It really is. And uh, we have, I mean, look at this unit as well. The uh, Say Light for the uh, the yeah the Say Regiment. Look awesome. The Scots for our light company version instead. Excellent to see them in action. We've got the King's German Legion as well, like but the Green Rascals. Really good units here being bought by the British. The Scots Guard, the Kings is a small variant of it, not the big one. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a lot of sort of melee stuff. Got cold streams there as well. Yeah, the Brits are bringing the guards. They're bringing all of them. The Highlanders as well. Oh, yes. Great to see it. We've got a fair few Portuguese units as well. And we have Beresford leading the way. Should be exciting to see. And already, look at this. I mean, this French defense here occupying this house is getting absolutely blasted here by Prussian artillery. And it looks like we're about to see a sea of land there uh, assault that building. It might take all of these units. I mean, I mean, maybe not this many, but quite a few of these units to try and assault this building. And look at that. There's even a Scots Guard unit. Uh, the kiddies here with the uh, the Prussians. The, uh, they've decided to loan some Brits to the uh, Prussian army as well. I mean, this is, yeah, 1814. I think that's part of Boulot's corps. Um, if you ever play like the core versions here, yeah, there's like a, a Anglo uh, Prussian core, which is kind of cool. It looks like we've got a serious land bear spam going on here from the Prussians. I'd love to see it. A uh, few like better well trained uh, land bear here, but yeah, they've really gone just heavy on um, on land bear and then brought another pr uh, Prince of Orange infantry unit here. And we also have the Saxon Grenadier Guard. Let's see them in action. That would be, again, another fun unit to see. I feel like they might have gone. At Heavy on Cav, maybe the Prussians. They've got like Trassi there. Looks like again King's German Legion, second Hussars. Bring a lot of like Anglo forces here, but uh, yeah, actually maybe not. Maybe not. In fact, uh, France has got a Cav. Uh, sorry, Britain's got Cav unit away in the back over there as well. It'll be a threat for France. And here we go. Look at this. This is like a guard cavalry for the French are getting overwhelmed by the ragged brigade here of the Brits, and that is a nice little win early on there for the British. Getting a, getting a very elite cab, you know, where they could have gone in there on the uh, the French infantry. I feel like they, that was a risk they could have potentially taken. Ledoux is here, so yeah, definitely 1814 France is being used in today's game. Yeah, I mean, Ledoux is always a sure sign of that. So we have 1814, I think it's a peninsula uh, campaign. Uh, France as well, here, with your guard shooting around. And then it is Naples, which is just Naples, really. Um, so yeah, this will be exciting to see. Naples are very hard beasts to use. Um, relies often on a lot of like low tier morale units, um, but we've got some decent guard and grenadier units uh, floating about as well. Looks like, uh, well, these aren't. These are just light infantry with zero morale. But some of their guard units, you know, can be pretty useful. Have some inspires, which can be helpful to hold the lines. So we'll see whether they get thrown in 
uh, to sort of, you know, just take up the, the fire of the Russians here. And it looks like that is the case. I think some of these units do have some decent uh, shooting stats and reloading stats, which could be quite useful on a hilltop like this. But here, yeah, Prussia's going in. It is, in fact, the kiddies going in there, already losing nearly half their men, breaking into that building. And it is Guardsman, Young Garden here, by the looks of it, fighting for this building. So, yeah, that's going to be a tough fight there for the Brits. Or the Poles, I should say. Oh, not the Poles, the Prussians, I should say. It's not even the Brits, really. It's the Prussian players. So there you go, I think. Oh, something's uh, routing's happening in the back here. Oh, the British have... Uh, I've, uh, that sneaky little cav unit back here has uh, been routed. It was just a little Portuguese cavalry unit, but it's been routed by dragoons. So there you go. That that uh, threat in the back for France has uh, has ended, but it has required a dragoon unit to go all the way back there and uh, waste some time. It looks like another French army might be on the way forward, or they've just forgot their general. I'm not really sure what they've gone. Um, but I imagine if it's a uh, like one of the Peninsula campaign uh, armies, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of dragoons here already. It looks like obviously they're going to try and use them as the main cav force. AC-14, maybe just a lot of cheap infantry, and maybe the same with uh, uh, with Naples. Naples currently with lots of cav itself, just a few uh, odd units. It's got a guard cav here by the looks of the guard lancers, uh, and then they can bring cuirassiers, but it doesn't look like they brought them. It looks like they brought quite a few lights, uh, and these are another lance unit here as well. We'll see how they do. And the uh, artillery for Naples also setting up on that hill. That will be able to throw back the Russians very nicely. That is for sure. And yeah, it looks like uh, some Saxon land bears also broken. So uh, that's a, a small success there for the French. Holding on to their building for now. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously buildings in NTW3 are very important. As they actually count as LOCs. So they're... Um, so yeah, they're... Kind of important. I mean, we've got two here, two four pointers, but actually the rest, I, I guess, count as one, maybe. So uh, at the moment, France holds one uh, LOC. I don't think anyone else actually really holds one. France, you could argue, holds this other one here. Uh, they look like their buildings are shelled to pieces. And yeah, the Prussians have got our three way back there, six pounders that are just, you know, got really good positions. A brilliant hill where they can just blast away on and do as much damage as they need to just by hitting these hills. It's, yeah, very, very good strategy there from the Prussians. Looks like they're going to rethink their uh, strategy and maybe try and go again. I think this is the right idea, though. Britain's definitely got the right idea. He's coming up this flank here, and this is what the Allies need to wait for. Just, just pin the French on this hilltop here, and the, uh, and the Neapolitans can't forget them. Very important in this game. But yeah, the Brits are coming, and they're going to come up this road here and flank. If Prussia and Britain can attack at the same time, they can hit this French army pretty nastily uh, on front and centre. So that could definitely be a really good threat there. Prussians are uh, patient. And you know, wait for, wait for the British. I mean, in Ladoux, he can uh, charge all he likes. Because a lot of these units over here are squareables. Uh, for the Brits, that's what they do well. They square up, and uh, they become a real frustrating problem for the French and their cavalry, which is often usually more numerous than the French uh, than the British. The British usually bring a lot of squares, very little cav. While the uh, French have minimal squares and a lot of cav usually. So these Chasseur Britanniques, they do not have a square ability. You can easily tell because it's got a little square next to their name if they can square. But yes, if you're enjoying all things Napoleonic and NTW3 and want to see more glorious battles like this one, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support, guys. It really does help out the channel. And if you ever want to send in any of your own replays to have them featured on the channel, feel free to do so. This was sent in by a member of my Discord. Uh, he said it's a pretty fun one, a very intense battle uh, and pretty brutal one so uh, i'm really looking forward to seeing how this one goes down intense brutal uh with the, the words that sold it for me i was like hell yeah let's let's check this one out also it's nice to see some uh, uh less played factions i feel like 1814 pressure not often brought uh naples is definitely often never brought um the other one's uh, probably a bit more so uh, maybe i don't know this portugal's uh portugal uk portugal's probably not brought as much as some other um uk factions i feel like we see a lot of uk netherlands uh, at the moment, but yeah, it's still a fun faction. It's a really good faction. I played it recently in a stream, and I had a lot of joy. But I think they can be quite useful. But yeah, here we go. Another kitty is coming forward, along with a lot of uh, a lot of Scots. I imagine one of those is going to get sent in. What is being sent in? The uh, the SA regiment, who have good melee stats. They have like 17 or 16 melee attacks for um, for a light infantry unit. Very good. And there you go. I think they took it immediately. Look at that. Where are the French were still in there, they just. They route immediately. I think. I think the French might have abandoned it and let the Brits have it. 
yeah, you can do the pole setting up here. Just like, um, I think this is, like I said, uh, I think this is the Peninsula campaign um, by France. I can't think of any other faction that maybe would have. These guys maybe, um, maybe like uh, Russia Center might have them, I guess. A lot of poles, so that might be potential. Why we have so many guardsmen here as well, actually. It might be Russian Center. Um, I might be. As a possibility, but yeah, uh, Poland's pushing forward here. And they're going to try and challenge, re challenge this uh, building, but Poles usually have a decent melee stats as well. So uh, they actually will be quite capable of doing the, the say, regiment here. And it's a 90 of damage to the farm out, so a couple more shells from uh, our three pieces, and that's going to come crashing down around the bricks. Yeah, here we go. The kiddies are also going in. I think they're trying to challenge the, units, uh, like the rest of the units outside the building uh, to take, try and turn it into a 2v1. It's not a bad strategy. It's a bit, in my opinion, it's a bit cheesy, but it always, it's, it's legal. It's fine. It's like, ah, damn it. Just make it fair. Let us have a 1v1. The same regiment shooting from above as well. That's going to help with morale. And the poles break just like that. And yeah, the kiddies should help throughout this. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's young guard, but it could be middle, I guess. Actually, now I'm looking at it. It looks a bit more like middle. They are getting routed, I think, by the Scots here. The Scots uh, put the guard. Well, actually, I don't know. Friendly fire might break them as well. Who knows? But the Brits in a line fight, that's what they want. They won a line fight against the French. The French want melee fights, and the British want a line fight. That includes the Portuguese as well. They are, uh, they're trained by the Brits, so they can reload and fire pretty well. Not as effectively as the British, but still pretty well. There you go. The kid needs to be broken. I think that's just friendly fire rather than anything else. And yeah, Prussia opens up with his land there again. And I think just get up that hill maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe they feel like they're at a, a good enough range that they're not going to get charged by the French. Which probably is the case. They're probably in safe uh, range here. Uh, probably the best place for the to go in, if it's going to go in anywhere, is the land there. Uh, it's a bit of a risk, but you could definitely hit like multiple units of land there. Um, if the French can get down the hill, which I personally think as well, they could probably march down this hill pretty comfortably at the moment. Like, young guard, and then some of these units here. I don't know, the French units can probably melee okay, look like they're okay units. If they, uh, if they, if they march down that hill with the support of Le Duc, who is now shifting back towards the center, and France is making a move, we might see a uh, full-out assault here on Prussia, and I think that's not a bad strategy. That would really throw the Brits off. It'd probably make them uh, have to try and reconnect with the uh, Russians in some way, but probably mean they'd have to withdraw because I don't think they can push on alone. There's a lot of cab and a decent amount of infantry uh, waiting for them as well. I don't know what unit this is. This is an odd unit. I don't know, maybe it's a Laguerre unit? unit? I really do not know what that is. There's some big units for the French there. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what Ledoux's going to do, whether he's going to go in, whether he's going to wait patiently for the right opportunity. I feel like sometimes uh, people feel a bit too nervous about using it, but... I feel like sometimes just charge him on in to see what happens, see what chaos will cause. Uh, we have got line infantry here breaking for the Russians. The Russians, again, another faction that don't really like line fights, they prefer a melee fight. And they found themselves now engaged in a line fight against a faction that would definitely prefer it. Uh, Naples, like I said, has very little morale on a lot of their units and their stats for melee aren't great. I don't think uh, they're nothing to be desired. If I, if I remember, they might be okay, but their morale is definitely awful. Um, but yeah, the, the Russians are trying to push up a hill against a better uh, shooting faction, and there's also guns here that seem to be using canister against the Russians. They are rolling back down the hill with their tails between their legs. And looks like Prussia is going to move forward with his Saxon land there. They're not even Prussian land there. They just, uh, Prussian lives are too expensive to waste. They're Saxons, these guys. There we go, more French infantry appearing. This is, like I said, I think is, um, I think this might be... I don't know. I really don't know what... I, maybe this is uh, more of a uh, centre. I mean, there's a lot of Vistula Legion here, which is either his, his Spanish campaign, or it's, like uh, like I said, or it's, um, like, centre. I think it must be Spanish campaign, I think. Looking at the amount of Vistula Legion. I, I think so. That, that must be the case. It's an odd build. I'm a bit, that's for sure. A lot of poles. A decent amount of cab. But it looks like I think it might be. It might be a Spanish campaign. So that would make Spanish campaign 1814. And then also Naples. This 
3v3 for France. It's so annoying that I can't see, like, through Fog of War, we can't see what units is and what factions is. Used to be able to with NTW3 back in the good old days. But, uh, not anymore. Bit of a shame. Just for replays would be quite nice. I, I can understand in, like, uh, in a multiplayer battle, but I think in the replay would be quite nice to be able to see. And the Prussians bringing the 95th rifle to close. Like, guys, just bring your own units. Don't bring the Brits. Might as well just play Britain at this point. I mean, with 8 points, you couldn't, but... You might as well have. Looking at points, it looks like it's a 29-point game. No. 18, 10. I thought they were for some reason a 12-point. I was getting very confused. Um, that's 17. 27 uh, points, actually, in this game. I was still aware I was getting 29 from. I was imagining that the Russians were a higher point value. The Green Rascals, I love this, a bit of a line fight, this is, you know, what they're kind of built for. They're, like, shooting stats are second to none, pretty much. They will do a lot of good damage. And here we go, looks like, is this the blue? It is. He's going in. The Dali against the Brit. So he's found a non square with Portuguese unit. And he's going to start hacking and slashing away. Uh, it also looks like Britain is sending forward his uh, Ragged Brigade. They've already seen a bit of action. Whether uh, you're yeah, gonna have a square form up here, that's a smart move there from the uh, Portuguese unit. And now you can see Prussian and British cavalry should be able to support. It looks like the uh, Royal Highland put the Black Watch are also getting ready. They're gonna start shooting away into Ladu. I don't blame them. Friendly fire or not, you've got to just try and take out as many numbers of Ladu as possible. They have managed to break that infantry and uh, the light streams there, and they look like they could route a few more. The Brits are actually going into melee with the cold streams. They're gonna slow down the, uh, the French advance. But uh, yeah, Britain could be in a bit of danger here um, because a lot of Visceral Legion, they're technically Old Guard units. They uh, are part of the Old Guard at various points. And they c are going into melee by looks of it. France has won the uh, Cav fight as well. They've lost their own Cav. Uh, but they have, uh, well, one Cav, but they have uh, managed to win, it seems. And Ledoux is going back in. He's found more non squareables so he needs to be careful here, not fiming. Oh, that was a horrendous spin there into Ledoux by the, uh, by the Portuguese. And that might nearly break them. Legion going in. I think the King's Jove Legion have pretty decent stats as well in melee. And look at that, that fire point by range. Look at that, you literally could miss it. Look how close these guys fire. The uh, Visceral Legion needs to get into melee if they want to survive that, but they're going to redline and break there. Yeah, they're breaking a few areas. A few micro mistakes out by the French, not getting into melee uh, and supporting this assault. And he's actually could potentially lose her. His general needs to definitely come forward and support, but she's uh, not done. And there you go, Visceral Legion losing out there. Uh, the dude has broken. The dude's broken. I think that point have been helped by the fimming. That's for sure. And there you go. I think with Ledoux breaking, go through the units. These French units here are routing. The King German first Assars coming forward. And we're going to see the uh, Black Watch as well charge in. Once French infantry is like the Gare type of unit, they immediately red line. That's not a good sign. They're getting shot by the uh, Portuguese as well. Over on this side here, Russia is also now assaulting up the hill against the Neapolitans. He's been thrown back in a few areas, but he is still making some progress. And they're trying to do that. Naples looks like they're now about to have a pretty dangerous cap fight on the flank here. We've got some uh, Gracias going in. Kind of getting shot at while they're in melee as well with those Gracias. Heavy cap here. I'm not having a fun time. This cap is orange lining, whether it's already seen action, whether it's just scared of... Um, Routing units around it, but uh, yeah, the Kiras is trying to get in there now. I mean, they're engaged against the other cab, they should win that. And we've got a Dragoon here, St. Petersburg Dragoon. The pretty good Dragoon here for the uh, Russians as well. That's been stuck in. And there you go, cab breaking for the uh, Neapolitans there. Now the Kiras can get in behind. They are tired. Whether they can get a uh, try and roll up this Neapolitan flank, I don't know. The Russian infantry really needs to move up here, get these uh, uh, units up here. And the Dragoons, could they now roll up and hit these guys? I don't know if these guys can fall square these. Neapolitans. That's usually not a skill they have available. A lot, lots of Russian infantry broken on the left, but the uh, the Russian right looks very good, which uh, might make the Russians rethink their assault. It's uh, the France are France isn't out, but they're pretty badly bloodied after that uh, that first sort of engagement there, that first proper assault there by the Allies. I mean, they made their assault on this side, and this they were really badly get put damaged by that. And here we go. France actually has a caveat in those victorious, like I said, on that right flank there, and it's going to get Beres with here. Beres is unaware of uh, this, and it's a Lancer uh, unit as well, and he's going to get stabbed up here, and I think he's going to die. He's definitely going to rout. He's redlining. Uh, no British units around him, they support, and there you go. He's routed. I imagine the French cab will continue until he's, uh, he's killed off, and 
certainly the volleys there won't help in trying to kill him off. And there you go, Beresford might just about survive. That was, uh, yeah, unfortunate for the Brits, but they should have been keeping an eye on this uh, tiny little cab unit. Beresford, I doubt will return. But yeah, without a general now, uh, British infantry might start to suffer in this fight. And now it will be the turn of France to be probably the defender on this flank if uh, they do continue to come forward. Yeah, Carabineers going in against going in against the, uh, the Portuguese infantry and immediately those Portuguese infantry lose. Uh, Britain is actually is rolling up this flank here that Prussia has been attacking. The Highland Foot here are engaged. Like I said, Prussia could do with just moving up here and just trying to squeeze uh, squeeze the French line here between the Highlanders and the uh, and the Prussians to the land there. Even if they're not that great, getting stuck in the melee in the side, I think then with the support of the Highlanders, they could have ro helped roll up this uh, flank a bit more. But they're now turning around. They're dealing with the Carabineers, and I think that will be their battle for here today for the Highlanders. Yeah, they're getting uh, they're getting routed. I think that volley over there routed them. But yeah, it looks like as well. Uh, actually, no, the Dragoons look like they've fallen back. I don't know whether the Russian cuirassiers went in or not. Uh, the Gussars. I'm going to guess they did. I don't see their routing unit. But I, presu I presume they did route somewhere. But I can't see them. So, oh, that's in there, the routing. The, the cuirassiers obviously went in. They were spent. And here comes Russia. Here comes Russia now. He's going into melee. This is risky. You can see, yeah, very tired. They've been marching a bit exhausted. Ah, that's not good. Well, that one's a uh, grenadier. That's a healthy grenadier and fresh, very fresh. This is an exhausted uh, line, but that's not going to do any good. So they're going in, are the, uh, the grenadiers. Red line in these uh, Neapolitans. Can they do a uh, decent job? We'll see. This is what they want, the Russians. They want to be in a melee fight. Uh, these are technically grenadiers. These are more scholarly. Uh, but yeah, they need to just all get into melee. Just don't stand in front of the uh, front of the Neapolitans. It's not worth it. Yeah, more line infantry breaking. They're going to have to get more of these guys in. The Grenadiers still looking very healthy. The Neapolitan centre is starting to crumble a little bit. I think there is a Grenadier unit lying around. Here it is. That might need to get thrown in soon. Looks like we're going to see some uh, Hussars thro thrown up the hill. They need to support their uh, their infantry to the cavalry. I mean, it looks like we've got the guard cav as well getting over here to support. Prussia needs to send in his cavalry uh, as well in supporting this fight. I feel like Prussia has been not the greatest of allies, I'd say, uh, at the moment. And France is actually getting into the back lines here. It looks like France is about to get uh, Blucher. Yeah, Blucher is now going to be uh, killed off by looks of it. Another little uh, Lancer cav from the French getting in behind. They have been very effective in this game. And you can see they're trying to swarm it looks like with those uh, cold streams and also the um, Saxon land there as well. But France uh, now taking the chance to attack Prussia, come down this hill, they have no general. These guards going in, I think they're a uh, young guard. And they go, young guard, they're better at shooting than they are really in melee, but they are going in anyway and they should be okay against a leaderless Prussia. I think especially since it's land there. Hold your fire France, don't shoot your own men in the back. But yeah, even these, I mean, tiny little French units. German unit come from somewhere. I don't know who that is. There you go, in they go. Look at this. So the Saxon Grenadier Guard, I'm surprised, not been sent into this melee fight. Where they think, I mean, it is orange lining and red lining a little bit. Yeah, it's just these uh, more elite units that the, uh, that the Saxons brought. Those more, like, British um, core units there. They're retreating with the Saxon Guard. Britain is pretty much finished by looks of it, actually. He's just committed and been killed off. What a brutal fight. Now it's really down to Russia to try and get up this hill and win. It doesn't look like he's going to succeed. We have actually Wittgenstein in combat here against... Uh, there might be a general as well. It might be just, oh no, it might be the guard cab units, the guard cab for their uh, Naples, I think. And there you go, the general's dead for... Uh, the Russians are now sending in the Kirassiers. I don't know why these guys didn't go in earlier. They definitely should have been thrown in a lot earlier to try and uh, get some kills, but there you go. Um, Kirassiers now coming in. We've got the German uh, Hussars as well. Look what happens when they push, though. The Neapolitans break. I mean, if these uh, units came earlier when the Russians were coming up this hill, then you wouldn't have seen Wittgenstein have to go in. But I think 
think that was uh, actually Naples. I think it's Naples' general that might die. Wittenstein's still healthy, so I think he's okay. That might be Naples' general that went in and got himself killed. Russia does look like he is going to finally ascend his health, but he's taking a lot of casualties doing so. Uh, France is running down Prussia here, trying to get kills on him. Trying to, yeah, just uh, mow him down. Don't know if Britain's really going to return from this one. His one chasseur Britannique and his uh, infantry and his gun aren't really going to be enough. And there's uh, now cavalry coming to run down his gun. What is the East Killer going to get? It looks like some uh, Westerphalian cavalry. And they go. There you go, they've been uh, routed of those guns and that uh, Portuguese infantry should follow suit and that is now Britain fully well and truly gone, I think. Uh, I think, yeah, Prussia's trying to retreat towards his guns. It's not a bad idea. They should just keep retreating. Try and use the guns for support. Try and uh, maybe get some canister going or something like that. They've got some guard units. These are guard units at the end of the day. It's really useful. The uh, Grenadier guards there should route this, this infantry, that French infantry. Yep, there you go. Now they just need to keep falling back. The cold stream shouldn't stay here, and that's the uh, Prince of Orange own breaking. But these two guard units, yeah, they, they can fight on well. If they have support from the R3, you, you give them a chance. But not now. All they needed to do was the French to get into melee, to get close. They've got better units back here that can do a good job. I mean, this is like these Dutch grenadiers. Which are guard units, they're like middle guard for the, uh, for the French. They're coming forward. I really don't know which army they're part of. Very odd. I'm slightly confused by the French armies of what the chair periods they are. I've had a guess, but I'm honestly not sure. They are shooting the back of their own it's a Bavarian so Or no, Vedenberg. Vedenberg. But there you go. They've routed all the Prussians. Some are returning, but they've routed all of them once at least anyway, all the infantry. That's uh pretty much it. But I mean they've been undone, have the allies here, pretty much by two little Lancer units that have got in behind. And they've just basically uh, charged the backs of uh, of the line and got generals. Um, that's pretty much all that they've done. Uh, Russia has done okay. Maybe should have uh, looked to maybe come up this hill and come towards the bridge first. Uh, really just like had a bit of a feint, I feel like, over here. He did try and do that anyway with the cuirassi as you saw it, but whether he should have done it a bit more with his infantry instead of advancing across the entire line up this hill. Uh, Prussia's now retreating with all his cavalry over here because I guess he's army losses and no general are making a mass route. Uh, Russia having gone onto this hill, Strelk is now starting to break, and I think Wittgenstein is also breaking. He looks like he's gone into melee here with the uh, with the Neapolitans, and that that is pretty much game. It's a pretty speedy one, actually. Uh, that's for sure. For NTW three levels, that is pretty speedy. Uh, there's some units returning. Oh, Russian, oh, Russian guns. I think it is just guns that need to be uh, run down here by the uh, Imperial forces. But yeah, I'm surprised the French were really on the back foot to start with. Uh, some pretty failed charges by uh, the Peninsula campaign, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, they like did some pretty poor charges, but they they turned it around, that's for sure. I think, like I said, those uh, those general snipes really good the game for them and uh, turned victory, uh, sorry, defeat into victory. Certainly turned uh, victory into defeat for the uh, Allies, that's for sure. And actually, that gun managed to survive. It managed to hold off. One, uh, one infantry wave, but it's not going to save this, uh, save itself from the second. The guardsmen go in. And with that Prussian unit routing, that should be GG there for the French. And uh, yeah, we'll have a quick look at the end results and we'll see uh, what they're like. I mean, uh, hopefully they're up on your screen. I, I can't see them, but this was sent in um, from uh, Piper, who was playing as... Uh, the Brits. So thank you very much, man, for sending this one in. It's very much appreciated. Uh, it's kind of like a melee build he's got going on. That's his sort of his style that he plays. Uh, so it's very much like a melee Britain. Uh, so there's lots of Highlanders, lots of, even some of the Portuguese units are pretty decent melee. Um, but it seems like it's a bit of a hybrid. It seems like a lot of like shooting units as well, like the um, Green Rascals and the Say Regiment, all, like all very good. I mean, they also are good in melee, but uh, they're also uh, particularly good in shooting uh, as well. Have a quick look at his unit stats. We've got the Green Rascals here with 403 unit, uh, 300 kills. That is insane for a unit in uh, in NTW3. That is actually very, very good. Um, King's German Legion getting um, um, 188 kills, 127 kills with the uh, Green Rascals, the second light foot, the, um, the second battalion. And then we have 100 kills with his artillery before that fell. And then his Highlanders, 98 kills. Uh, 
And then, yeah, the Kitties getting 69 kills. The uh, Highland Foot there getting 57. The SA Regiment, 38. But yeah, they had an okay game. Uh, they did okay, that's for sure. But yeah, they, if you want to see the rest of those kills, there they are. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you did enjoy uh, this NTW3 battle. It certainly was a fun one. If you want to see more Napoleonic action, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment show support. And I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye for now.